your ministry right here on KAZ Radio. You have something coming up in the city of Cleveland, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. But the way I get my audience to get to know you okay. is by your testimony. Okay. Could you share your testimony with our audience? Sure. Um, I got saved way back when I was uh, 14 years old. Yes. I met my husband who had been with our pastor at that time, and uh he took me to church, and I got saved, and I, I was 14, and I've been saved ever since, and um, it's been certainly a journey. Amen. Uh, amen. amen. Yeah, and uh, times of growth and everything, but I, I praise God for the foundation that my pastor, um, Bishop Charles Clark, put in me. It was a yes. foundation of faith, and it really helped me for the long haul. Now, now, yeah. now you say your husband. Mm-hmm. Took you to church. He took me to church, yeah. He found you, said, I found me a good thing, and I'm going to get her in church. He did. He did. He was my boyfriend, and I was impressed because he was quoting scriptures Uh. to me. (laughs) (laughs) And he took me to his church, and um, he actually, he tells a story that he told me we couldn't get married if I didn't get saved. Wow. And so um, he he claims that that's what made me come to church. That, but, th- that's what it was. Yeah, that's what he said. He, but, him, him, mm-hmm. him saying you must get saved. Yeah. That's and you've been saved for quite a while yeah, now. Yeah. Now, connect the dots for me now. You, from, from, from being saved to going into ministry to becoming a pastor. Sh- yeah. Share that with our audience. How, yeah. how did that happen? Uh, well, I never thought... And when I when I got saved, I didn't or married. I didn't think I would be a pastor's wife at that time. But we were very involved in ministry, and I was in charge of the um, children's ministry for many years. And uh, he also worked with the children's ministry. So and e- eventually we got to the place where we headed up a young adults ministry mm. together. And um, through that, it just kind of came to be. And he actually knew. He knew he was going to be a pastor. Okay. He knew he was called to be a pastor. We didn't know how that was all going to play out. Right. But um, eventually God opened up the way, and he opened up the door for us to begin our ministry. And so we've been in ministry 15 years now. Back in 2000 is when we started House of Jubilee Ministries. Okay. And did House of Jubilee start in a building or did it start in your home? It started in our home. It started in started your in home. Started in our home, yep. 14 wow. people in our house. Wow. Yeah. 14 people, including the kids? Including, just 14, the, kids. including yes. the kids. Yes. Yes. <laughs> including the kids. Amen. Now, 14 people. Now, looking back on those 14 years of ministry, um, what are some of the highlights? What are some of the best things that you just chew on when things are bad what what is it i think for me it's the growth of the people i see the change and the impact that we're making in lives and when it seems like the ministry gets heavy or it feels like you're not doing enough somebody will text or somebody will call or you'll remember an event something that you know you see that God is making an impact he is changing people that these people are not who they were 15 years ago or 10 years ago or 5 years ago so you know even though you may go through things in the ministry that God is still he's still impacting lives he's still changing lives he's still changing minds and we are witnessing and seeing it and so that gives us the energy and the you know the, the the strength to continue to do what God's called us to do. Now, in your um, ministry, there are several ministries in your With ministry. The, yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the, the the ministries that I just got wind of is MTM oh, yes. Ministries. And MTM. tell us about uh, the, the the MTM Ministry because you got a, an event coming up. And uh, I want to make sure the folks get to get to see that. Okay. But I want to know how did you know from from being Pastor Trotter to actually starting this this MTM ministry? Tell us about that. Okay, uh, well, the real transition with that came several years ago, maybe about six or seven years ago. Okay. Um, I we were I had a pretty strong women's ministry called Grace okay. that I was you know that we do as part of House of Jubilee. And from that I saw that the women begin to they got to the place where 
it was almost larger than grace. It was mm-hmm. almost larger than the women's ministry. And um, God began to speak to me also concerning women pastors. Because when I stepped into the pastorate 15 years ago, I had little to no connection with other women and female pastors, co-pastors, first ladies. And um, that was kind of stressful because I wanted to connect with somebody to find out what the heck was this position all about. And it was very few. And so God began to speak to me about that portion of just trying to connect women pastors, leaders, women in leadership, and also these ladies who had come through grace um, to be able to take them to another level. Yes. And so from that, then um, God put on my heart to do a mentoring program, which we call Kingdom Queens Mentoring Association or Kwama, and um, to also branch off with this leading ladies piece, which was solely for uh, women in ministry pastors wives co-pastors and 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 female pastors so what are some of the the um struggles that female pastors uh experience in ministry i think one of the struggles that we face is really finding our position in Mm. that finding our role because there are some female pastors or co-pastors who um are not preachers. Okay. They're not teachers. And they are the ones who do, some of them do great administration in their churches. They may be music leaders or other things. They may be into evangelism. But if, you know, sometimes we step in, like I'm not a singer. Mm-hmm. I'm not great at administration. Okay. So I had to find, I'm, I'm a good preacher. Though. Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> so I had to man. find my role. I had to find, not try to pattern after what I've seen or you know what's out there already but just find my role what is my role and so i think that for uh uh female co-pastors we have to find that role where do we fit where do we flow now in the ministry it's interesting you mentioned um um your 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 ability to preach and share the word because i've been at your church on several occasions and i've had the opportunity to to hear you preach and um I walked away one Sunday full in the spirit because, and and tell me what this is. Is this prophetic or what? But you felt the concerns of the congregation that day. Mm -hmm. you, you, You walked in there and you were totally in the spirit and you just felt the, the needs of the congregation. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you contribute that to? Because it it affected me. I said, "Wow, she really, you know." And I'm visiting, and she's hitting at home. Mm-hmm. Is that prophetic? Is that um, was that just an experience of of a lifetime? I mean, what was that? Well, apostle. I uh, don't, and I always say, I'm not a prophet, but then I've had several people stop me and tell me, "Stop saying stop that." Stop saying that mm-hmm. uh, because you don't have to be a prophet to be prophetic. Mm-hmm. But I believe that as a minister in his house that he does use me prophetically especially to speak to our congregation when he has something specific to say okay. word of wisdom word of knowledge you know just at that moment to speak and he, he use he does that quite often too at, at, so, the, at, the, at, house at the house of jubilee mm-hmm. now the, you have a all-star lineup all-star of, lineup. Uh, all-star lineup of, of of women of god that that will be um at the uh, event coming up, is it next? Is it this week? It starts or? Wednesday. It this starts Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes. Um, t- tell us who's going to be there on Wednesday night. We have Prophetess Kim Fleming Kim. from okay. uh, um, uh, Christian Fellowship Christ- Center. Yes. And then on Thursday night, we have Dr. Deronda Bay Woo-hoo. from Crest Com- Quest Community. On Friday night, we have Elder Monique Williams amen. from River the Life. Okay, amen, mm-hmm. amen. And then on Saturday morning, uh, my sister, uh, Minister Lisa Turner, will be hosting a SIP uh, conference, which is her School of Intercessory Prayer, oh, wow. where she will be teaching the art of spiritual warfare and intercession. Okay. So that's going to be awesome. And then our luncheon, which will be held at 1230 that afternoon, yes. we'll have a luncheon and it will be our keynote speaker will be Dr. Martina Moore, wow. who is the uh, CEO of Moore Counseling and Mediation yeah, Services. Another, oh, a lot of powerful yeah, women. Just, just, a, yeah. man, just a, a, a prefla yes, of, yes. Of, of, of powerful women of God coming to the House of Jubilee to, to share with other women. Is this just for women or is this for... 
Oh, we always Jesus have. Men. Let me tell you, at these me. conferences, um, and I'll be ending up on that Saturday evening at six o'clock. But at our conferences, we have had children getting deliverance. We've had men getting deliverance. Uh, the men come in, especially at my church. You know, they they don't let me leave them out of mm. grace or anything else. They come there, they aid, they assist, they do whatever. But they're also in that move of God, and they're getting their healing. They're getting their deliverances. Many wow. times they're at the altar and after the altar work is done they're still standing there warning and ready to receive what God has for them too so yeah it's, it's powerful so we almost want to take women off of it okay, and just so you know just yeah. call it you know right, this right, empowerment, right. Conference empowerment conference because it's right. for everybody and anybody and it's free and, and it's free yeah. and it is free you all hear that it is it's free a now free conference. You, you, your husband Apostle Trotter a, a, a dear friend of mine a great man of God a uh, I mean, he is he is so giving uh, in his craft of carpentry, but he's also giving in the area of the pulpit. Mm -hmm. When I talk to mm -hmm. him, sometimes I say, "Well, who's preaching this Sunday?" My wife. Who's preaching? It's almost every Sunday. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. bringing the word. Yeah. Have you found that some? pastors wives or some pastors uh in, in other churches don't have that type of opportunity absolutely absolutely i have i run into it a lot and and a lot and have you ever consult them and what type of advice would you give them they're 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 hungry to share the gospel but yet there's a roadblock by either their pastor, their mm -hmm. bishop, their husband. Mm -hmm. what, what do you what, what do you tell them? First, I tell them that their gift will make room for them. Yes, and um, I believe that if if they don't have that opening there, that God gives an, uh, them an opening somewhere to mm -hmm. be able to share the gospel. Another reason that I have the leading ladies because it does give women who are full of the word an opportunity to share with people when they don't have that open door. You yes. know, I bring them into the grace meetings to share. I bring them into the um, lean ladies meetings to share because oftentimes it's not like that. Everybody doesn't have that. And I really, you know, I'm always grateful to my husband for seeing not, not only does he see the gift in me, but he pushes the gift mm, yes, where I want to stand back. Sometimes it's, I feel his hands in my back. So I know that I'm privileged to have that. So. I try to present that or make that opportunity for women who, who are so full of the word, right. but they don't have a place to share it. Now, how do you um, help us men who are male chauvinists? <laughs> okay, I'm not saying I'm male chauvinists, but us men that are male chauvinists, mm -hmm. you know, women don't, women don't be needing to be preaching. You know, I use my old Baptist yeah, voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you, what do you tell them if you tell them anything at all? I haven't really had an opportunity to, to tell it, but if, if I have, could, mm -hmm. I would tell them they are missing out on some tremendous gifting, yes. tremendous gifting. Um, I would tell them that most of you were taught by a woman in Sunday school, and that's what got you to where you are, and prayed for by a woman, right. and interceded by who uh -huh. was probably your mom or right. your grandmother to get you to where you are, right. and that in these last days, his spirit is being poured out on all flesh, yes. and he already said that that the women of God would be used, you know, and prophetically, and that we would be used in teaching, and don't stifle the gift of God. Don't yes. hold back. Let it pour out. Out. Because a lot of times that other that that woman and what she has to say and that part that she brings, which is not male, it's yes. female, yes. and it's you know it, it comes from a different level and a different place. It just brings this whole other level yes. to ministry. It, it 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 rounds it out. It definitely rounds it out. Now in your travels, um, I I watch you on, on social media. You guys were over in. Uh, Chicago. Yes, yes. At yes. Dr. Bill Winston's yes. um, a conference. Yes. Can you share a little bit of that with us? That was so awesome. The atmosphere was so awesome. It was the place, I just believe that men and women of God, we've got to get to 
places where it's just saturated with his presence and mm. saturated with his word so that we can be infused yes. for that week or for that time be infused with the, with what God is saying now what God is doing now you know we need to be refreshed and, yes. and filled up yes. and just to be in that atmosphere to hear those ministers week after week I mean day after day um, just expound everybody coming from a different angle and the impartation was so powerful and so strong so strong wow. just the presence of god it was just amazing and the word level was just off the charts so now I'm, I'm i'm waiting for uh the house of jubilee to put on a faith conference yes. or do you do one already? we we haven't done one in uh we did one about two years ago okay and it's something that we are now looking to do and to to get back into that place of doing a faith because you know we're, we're strong in that area. Now, your, your church uh, is not a denominational church, or is it? No, it's non denominational. Okay. Yeah. But you are strong in the area of faith. Yes. Tell us about faith. Um, faith is what we were taught. And when I, when I came to know Christ at 14, my pastor was, he was out of the box at that time because mm. you know most people were very much more traditional than right. him and he um he introduced us at that time to kenneth copeland kenneth hagan um john osteen and all those people and uh he took um took us to conferences and when they were coming near he always took us he so he taught us a very strong word faith based i never really got into religious uh Gotcha. teachings right, because right. he he didn't ever teach me that and so um that's just kind of where we've geared this ministry and by putting that to work for us we've seen god do things that's been amazing you know just to get into even the location where we are oh, how god goodness. did you know put us into that place so we've seen it work i you know i know people talk about it and everything but you know if something is working you might as well stick, stick with, with it, it. You might as well do it. Amen. Yes. And and the the importance of of faith in the church is paramount to God, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's impossible Absolutely. to please Him it's without impossible it. Impossible to please Him without it. And I'm 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 thinking about the the beautiful building that you guys are in, and for the you know for the pastors out there that that are are you know I won't say struggling, but wanting to get to the level uh, that the House of Jubilee has reached. Uh, what would be your advice to them? Have faith in God. I wish I could sit down and open up a book and say A, B, C, and D. Okay. But, um, Apostle, to be totally honest, we have believed God. We've sown seed into other ministries. My husband yes. has helped to build oh other ministries. Um, he has, as a church, we sow seed. We teach our people to sow. And um, we just build on faith. We Amen. build on when we got the building we're in. We had no money. We had nothing. We just told the guy the vision, and he said, "I believe you." And he gave us the space, you know. And my and you know my husband's vision is just he just did the work there. But it's all been by faith. And your building used to be a bowling alley. It used to be a bowling alley. Wow, yes. you would have never guessed yes. it looking at it. I mean, are the lanes still in the? No, the lanes are gone. gone. Everything's gone. gone. Yeah. Wow, that is gone. fabulous. That yeah. is absolutely fabulous. Now, we know you're a mom. Yes. And mm -hmm. we can't let you leave the air without at least giving a shout out to the babies and tell yeah. us a little bit about them. Okay. I have three kids okay. and two and three grandkids. Um, um, actually, four of my oldest daughter is, her, is married, and she's a school teacher, and um, Dejan. And then Ashley is my middle daughter. She's 26, and she is a hairstylist. Miss Blessed Hand, she's the best. Okay. And okay. then my uh, son, he is um, 22, and he's in school. He's finishing up college or in the middle wow. of college, and he's working right now. Wow. And um, then I have three great, wonderful, marvelous grandchildren, Marche, oh, yes, and, yes. who's 10, Braylon is 5, and um, Judah is 11 months. He'll be a year old in wow. October. And we are, again, excited because we know that we have a conference coming up this coming Wednesday, starting Wednesday in a couple days, that Pastor is putting is, is hosting, 
and she's going to uh, f familiarize us with some more other things. What are the dates, the times, the place, the address, and all that? Go ahead, share it with us. Okay. Uh, the dates are, it starts on Wednesday, September the 30th, and it'll run through Saturday, October the 3rd. It is nightly starting at 7 p.m. Then Saturday's event starts at 9 o'clock. The luncheon will start at 1230, and then the evening service, the roundup, will be 6 o'clock p.m on saturday amen and you're serving dinner at one of we are having lu lunch, a, luncheon, a luncheon which is uh 25 dollars it's the only cost to the conference and um so that'll be right across the parking lot from us at tisano's banquet center oh that's gonna be nice yeah that's gonna be nice well thank you so much pastor trotter for coming on KAZ Radio Television Network. We really appreciate you sharing your ministry, your life, your testimony, and your upcoming conference with, with our viewers. And um, let's close out with this. What would you tell a, a young lady who desires to go into ministry? Uh, what would be your advice to her? My advice to her would be to um, seek the face of God, yes. to eliminate what she's not supposed to do, because we waste time with what we're not supposed to do. Get in your lane, stay in your lane, and develop yourself. If it's schooling you need, if you need to be around, always get somebody higher than you going in that, er that area, connect with them. And, uh, and and move. It's going to be obstacles. It's going to be contradictions to what you think you're supposed to be going to. But stretch yourself past those places and keep moving. Sometimes you have to do it intimidated. Mm. You have to do it afraid. Mm. You may do it with tears running down your face, but don't stop. Amen. And that's good advice for both men and women. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, 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 Pastor Michelle Trotter, I just want to close with this. I love you. Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Until Amen. next time. Nothing I want to do about it. Amen. <laughs> Excellent. 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 It wasn't a whole half hour because you, I thought you had Bay or somebody, but that was great. Okay. That was great.